So it's been a little while since I have done a long-term review of a distro, and I have taken a little bit of a break from it simply because the last one was just so exhausting. I spent three months on Kinoite, and it was just kind of a pain in the rear end. So I took a little bit of a break, but it's time to do another one. And I sent out a tweet asking for suggestions on my next long-term review, and one of the suggestions was KD Neon. Now, I do take a look at a lot of KD distros, but I have never actually taken a look at KD Neon before. So I decided I was going to go ahead and use KD Neon for a month. Now, I'm going to do this long-term review a little bit differently than the ones in the past. Instead of just doing one big long-term review video at the end of my time with the distribution, I'm instead going to split it into three parts. So this video here is going to be my first impressions, and then I will do another video midway through where I talk about some of the things that I've done to customize the distro and some of my thoughts two weeks in and two or three weeks in. And then I will do a final video where I kind of do a conclusion, and that will be the actual review of the distro. So if you are interested in that kind of stuff, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Look at me doing all the whole YouTuber thing. So I've installed KD Neon on hardware, and the installation was fairly decent. So it uses the Calamari's installer, and it didn't do the whole scanning through all my drives thing that Calamari's usually does, which was really good. I couldn't get it to install on the hard drive that I normally use for these reviews, and I blamed K KD Neon for that, but if you've watched the channel for the last month or so, you've noticed that I've had a hard time installing things specifically for these types of first looks and reviews. And it turns out that it's not the distros, and it's not me, it's the hard drive. The hard drive is busted. I don't know what's going on there, so if you have noticed that I have had a hard time installing things, you now know what the problem is. It was the hard drive is just kind of a dud. So I installed KD Neon on a different hard drive, and here we are with KD Neon. Now, out of the box, I hate this wallpaper. It's much too bright for me. It's interesting, but it's not for me. I'm definitely going to change it. I wanted to leave it just so I could bitch about it for a second, but it's not a good wallpaper for me. It's better than the Ubuntu wallpaper, don't get me wrong, but it's not a great wallpaper for me. Other than that, the look and feel is just pure KDE, and that is as it's meant to be. KDE Neon is developed by the KDE guys, so if you want the most pure KDE experience, KDE Neon is probably going to be the one that you want to try out. This distro is going to get all the KDE features and stuff like that before any other distro out there. That is, if you're using the unstable version of KDE Neon, which I'm not. I'm using the stable version, so this is going to be a little bit behind, but it's still going to be the most pure KD experience you're going to get. So this is based on Ubuntu, and it does all the normal Ubuntu things that you'd expect. There is a little bit of a weirdness going on when it comes to the package management, so if I open up a terminal and get it on the right monitor, because of course it's going to open up on the other monitor, there are two package managers installed, and it's a little bit weird, because sometimes it tells you to use the other one. So when I the first thing I did when... I install after I finished the installation was I came into KD Neon and did an update just like I normally would. So I did sudo apt upgrade and then I did and and sudo apt update like so. And I expected it just to go through and do what it normally does, which is update the mirrors and then I think I have this switched around, but just ignore that. You know, it updates the mirrors and then it does, you know, an update. If I, you know, put those in the proper order but it wouldn't let me do it it's it said you can use apt but we recommend you use something different and i was like what now it's there, it gave you an option to kind of bypass the suggestion and i haven't been able to get that to come back up unfortunately so i can't show you but it, the thing that it recommended you to do you to do was do pk con like so and update and it looks like that and the thing is is i'm not sure what pk con is I'm really, really not. It does tend to not use sudo, I think. Maybe you can use sudo, and it just tells you not to. I don't know. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Nala, to be honest with you. I covered Nala a couple weeks ago, and Nala was a really nice kind of replacement for apt, and that kind of is what PKCon reminds me of. It has a different user interface, and it does the same thing as that apt would do, but in a slightly different TUI interface kind of way. I'm not sure 
what this is, though, to be honest with you. I don't know if this is KD Neon specific or if it's something that is on other distros and I've just never seen it before. It's definitely going to be something that I'm going to have to look into and see what it's kind of meant to be and if you're meant to use this or if you're meant to use apt, what the differences between using PKCon and apt is. You know, I'm not sure what direction that rabbit hole is going to take me, but it's definitely going to be an area that I kind of look into. So the interesting thing is, is that Flathub is installed by default, so is Snaps. So if I, again, open up a terminal and then bring it back over to the proper monitor, I can do something like snap install Firefox and it will do it, right? I can also do Flatpak install Firefox and it will do it. So this is one of the few distributions that I've tried that has both snaps and Flatpaks installed and has Flathub enabled out of the box. So when you first install this, you're going to find a huge variety of software from different sources. And I think that that is great. Now, the one thing that that means is that you're going to have to pay a lot of attention to the software store. So the software store in this is going to be Discover. And the thing about Discover is you're going to have to pay attention to the source. So you have access to Snaps, Flathub, and the regular repository. So Discover has gotten way better at choosing the sources over the last few years, I guess a couple years now. And it's definitely going to be easier if you are more used to using a graphical you know, store to install stuff than it used to be. I have to say, I've given Discover a lot of crap over the last five years. Discover, when I first started using Linux, was god-awful. It was slow. Most of the time, the screenshots weren't here. And if you they were here, you couldn't click on them to actually make them bigger. You know, you just had the like this, the little thumbnail. There were no descriptions. There were no reviews. Nothing like that. There were no links to websites. None of that stuff existed. But now, as you can see, at least for some things, the screenshots are here. There's a rating system, which is nice. There is a place where you can donate and report bugs, which is just fantastic. A link to the documentation and the website. The ability to choose where you're installing stuff from. I opened this up and I'm honestly quite blown away at how much better it is than the last time I actually looked at it. So I'm still not a graphical app store kind of guy. I prefer to install everything from the terminal, but this is way better than it used to be. I don't know whether or not the changes that I'm talking about are something that go past that first like featured page. Like if you go into like any of these categories and then click on something do they have the same thing and this one appears to have all that stuff i don't know if that's going to be something that is kind of consistent across everything that's in the store or not but the ones that i've clicked on so far have all had that stuff which is really nice so let me talk about a couple problems that i'm having right out of the box which is normal for me right so the first thing that is probably the biggest problem i've had so far is that KD Neon will not let my monitors go to sleep. I don't know what's going on there. I've looked at the inhibitors, which is something you're supposed to look at to see if there's something that's keeping your mon your computer from going to sleep. I don't know if that has anything to do with the monitors not being able to go to sleep because the computer actually stays on. I just don't want the monitors to go dark. But the monitors don't go dark. They actually turn off for a second and then come back on and just show the lock screen with the time on it, which is annoying because I don't want the monitors to be on at all. So that leads me to believe that there's something that's waking them back up. I just don't know what, and I have no clue how to fix that. So that's going to be have something that I'm going to have to look into because otherwise I'm going to have to turn the monitors off and that's a pain in the butt. So that's one area that I'm having some problems with. Installing OBS and Audacity, both of those were fine. I did have some issues with source selection where it kept wanting to choose a diff uh, the wrong source. I'm not sure if it's using Pulse Audio or Pipeware. I haven't looked that far into it yet, but there was something there. I did eventually get that fixed just because I'm kind of used to fixing that kind of stuff because that just happens with Pipeware and Pulse Audio all the time. So th that's definitely going to be something that you probably want to check if you're doing this kind of stuff where you're recording audio and stuff. Just make sure you're getting the right sources, but you're probably used to that as well. Uh, another thing that I've noticed that is just kind of a KDE problem. The discoverability of the settings panel is still just really, really bad. Every time I try KDE, I come back to the same thing. Like they've done a better job of categorizing this stuff since, you know, over the last couple of years. But there's, especially when you look into like the, the shortcuts or whatever. First of all, call them key bindings. 
like a normal person, shortcuts, or key, at, least key, at least put the word keyboard in there, right? Keyboard shortcuts, key bindings, whatever it is. I don't. I, I was looking for that and I kept bypassing shortcuts. I was like, I don't know what the, that is. Eventually, I got here, but the categorization on the actual key bindings themselves is a little weird. It seems like they bury most of the stuff that you're going to want inside KWIN. I guess that's technically where they're supposed to go, but I don't know that that's all that user-friendly, seeing as how a lot of people don't know what KWIN is, so I don't know how well these... Uh, these categories are actually for new users, but then maybe new users don't care about key bindings at all. Maybe that's a thing. So I spent a good portion of a half an hour or so splunking into all these to change the key bindings so that I could change some of the things like so I can do super Q to close and things like that. So the KD settings panel is still kind of a mess for me. I'm going to try to spend some of the next month learning it over again because I haven't spent a ton of time in the KDE settings panel in quite some time since like the beginning of my Kena White review and I don't think a lot of it's changed but I think I had so many problems with it in Kena White where it kept crashing all the time that I just kind of wrote it off and didn't spend much time in it at all. I haven't noticed any crashes so far on Neon. The only real system issue I'm having is where the monitors won't turn off so it, at least over the last two days has been much more stable than Kena White was. Like I said, usually when I chose a new theme or something like that, from here in Kena White, it would crash. So let me see if I can actually kind of stress test this right on the video. You never know. We'll, we'll choose one of these. Oh, another thing that was really weird. So I wanted to install Cavantum because I use Cavantum alongside the theming capabilities of KDE itself to theme stuff, right? And I haven't actually done anything yet, but I wanted it installed. I was very, it was very weird that Cavantum's not in the repositories. It's not in the Ubuntu or Debian or any of those repositories. I don't, actually didn't look and see if it's a flat pack. I don't think it is. But I ended up having to build it from source, which was really weird because it's like it's, it's on Fedora, it's on Arch, but it's not on Ubuntu. Uh, it's just really weird. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and install one of these things. We'll see how it goes. I will say that this hasn't gotten any faster. It's, I mean, theoretically, I could go to the website, download the thing, and then install it that way faster than this does. But maybe I'm just overestimating, overestimating my capabilities there as well. It's at this point, after I entered the password in Kenoite, where I had errors come up and things start crashing. So we'll see if that happens here. Okay, so I got it installed, and then as you can see, <laughs> uh, KWIN crashed as, as I was actually changing the theme. And I have no idea why I did that, and now things are full screen when they shouldn't be. And it was a little weird, Dolphin crashed, I'm not sure why. Uh, but I did actually get the themes you know, installed and up and running, and I'm glad that my recording here hasn't actually, you know, been kaput, which I would have been very upset with because I'm almost done with this video and I would have had to start over again. But yeah, that seems to be oh, still just a little bit broken. I mean, I, I, that experience wasn't good. Now, the thing is, is that I'm recording a video, so it's possible that the reason why that didn't change very well and Kwin kind of completely crashed until I went to a TTY and came back, it's possible that the reason why it did all that crashing stuff is because I was recording a video. Maybe OBS or something like that does something that conflicts with changing the theme or something, and you just shouldn't do those two things at the same time. I don't know. It's possible. I will try off camera and see if I end up having the same problem. So that's definitely going to be something that I'm going to be playing around with because obviously, as everybody knows who watches this channel, I customize things a lot. So I'm going to spend some good time customizing KDE, and I'm going to test the hell out of this and see if I can get it so that's not actually as crashy as, as I think it you know, is because I know that I have more KD problems than everybody else seems to have. So I, it's just possible that I'm an idiot and I don't know how to use KDE. And that's the reason why things crash. I don't think that that's true. I mean, I am an idiot, but I don't know whether or not me being an idiot is what's been causing my issues with KDE. We'll see. Anyways, in terms of pre-installed software, uh, I have installed some things like I've installed Ferdium and Discord and uh, Audacity and OBS and stuff like that. There are some other things that... Oh, I've also installed Crusader, of course. It comes with Firefox as the web browser. It has quite a few of the KDE stuff. So KDE Connect, KDE 
uh, partition manager, consoles, the terminal, Cru uh, Crusader I installed, Kvantum I installed, K Wallet Manager, and K Raider both here. I don't see Kate, which is a little weird. Like I, I figured Kate would be the default text uh, text editor, but K Raider actually is the default. Oh, I've installed Mark Texas as well. Uh, as the ocular and spectacle for screenshots. Well, the one thing that I'm actually really surprised at is that it's not the full K suite of applications. So like K mail's not here. A whole bunch of the K suite of stuff is just not here. I figured that it would be. So this is actually a fairly lightweight distro in terms of actual apps that they've installed. VLC is here for media playback. That seems to be the only media playback thing that they've actually installed. So that's gonna be for both music and video. If that's what you want to use it for, otherwise you'll have to, you'd have to use your own or install your own. So yeah, those are my very early initial first thoughts on KD Neon. Two areas that I'm going to be focusing on in the long-term review, and these are personal things for me that I'm just either interested in or whatever. So the, the first one is that really weird package manager, the PKCon. I don't know what it is. I want to find out. I want to figure out what's different about it than apt. The other thing that I'm going to be spending a lot of time on is trying to figure out where my KD theming problems are coming from. So I want to know why, whenever I switch to a theme, things go to hell in a handbasket. So there's obviously something there that I'm either doing wrong or it doesn't like my computer or something. I'm going to find out and I'm going to do what I didn't do in the Kino White review. I'm going to drill down into that problem and see if I can actually figure out what's going on. Maybe file a bug report if I'm actually just having a bug. Or if it's a problem, you know, for me personally, I can fix that kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to be, two of the things that I'm going to be focusing on. I'll also do some gaming, see how well it does with games. And I will talk a little bit about performance and stability, obviously, in the subsequent videos that I do in this series. So that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on KD Neon, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing people. I'm so, so grateful for you guys, for your support. I'm just always blown away that you guys support me. So thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.